Hey guys, Sebi's Random Tech back here with another video, and today we're going to be looking at the Lenovo ThinkPad X201. So, this is a laptop I purchased off eBay for like $60, $70, something like that. Got a really good deal on it. It came with the laptop, the charger, even came with the Ultra Base, which is basically a docking station. It has an optical drive built in, and it even has a little door here on the side that lets you charge an additional battery while also charging the one that's on the ThinkPad. And then it has your usual array of USB ports, display outputs, audio jacks, that sort of thing. Um, so all in all, it was a pretty good deal. And it was a fully working machine, and it even came with the hard drive caddy, which is nice, because a lot of times when I order these laptops off of eBay, they don't come with the hard drive caddy, which always ticks me off. Like, I understand you want to get the hard drive out of there to protect the previous user's privacy, but you can take the two extra minutes to take the hard drive out of the caddy and leave the caddy in there so I don't have to order a new one. So what we're going to be doing today is putting a better quality display in this ThinkPad. Uh, by default, these all come with TN panels, which, I mean, it gets the job done, but it has the same issues that all TN panels have. Poor colors, poor contrast, poor viewing angles. And... Um, some people like to have good displays on their laptops, believe it or not. So, there was never really an option for an IPS display on the X201. I believe some of the tablet models had an IPS display, uh, but this is not a tablet model, and from what I've heard, some of the tablet versions of the screens can't be used with a non-tablet X201. However, there is a mod that we can do, um, involving a display that you can use in the X200. And this is the model HV121WX4-120 display. It's a 12.1 inch, 1280 by 800 display. And it uses a technology called AFFS, which is very similar to IPS and has a lot of the same benefits of IPS displays. You get better colors and contrast and you get much better viewing angles. So the reason why it's advertised for the X200 and not the X201 is because it's a CCFL backlit display, meaning it uses fluorescent tubes for the backlight as opposed to LEDs which the X201 exclusively uses. Um, because of this, it can normally only be used in X200s and even then it can only be used in X200s which have a CCFL in them, because some X200s had LED backlit screens, while some had CCFL backlit screens. The CCFL displays use a different ribbon cable from the LED displays, and they also have an inverter board for the backlight, which is not present in the LED versions of the display assemblies. So, you can get the display on eBay for around $70-$80, Expect it to take a few weeks to get here because you have to ship it from China most of the time. And depending on what's available um, or what you can find, in my case I paid $40 for the display assembly that had the CCFL uh, design in there. Um, the first X200 screen I ordered actually was an LED display, which wasn't going to work. So now I have an extra X200 display lying around in addition to the original X201 display. But I did manage to get the correct display the second time around. I made sure before buying it that it was a CCFL display and not an LED display. Now normally when you're looking at a display you want an LED display. They're brighter, they're more energy efficient, they don't dim with age, and they don't yellow with age. Uh, but in our case, there really isn't an LED alternative. I have read on some of the forums about there being an LED version of this display, but I really couldn't find enough information about this to really confirm or deny its existence. In addition, I know that it is possible in many cases to modify a CCFL display to instead use LED backlights, uh, so I don't know how much that would work, and I don't know enough about it to say, hey, you can put an LED backlight in this display. I'm not going to say that because I can't find enough information to really confirm that it's possible. So, before we get started with this, the other thing I should tell you is that since this is a display using CCFLs instead of LEDs, there are some trade-offs with using CCFL backlighting. Uh, like I already said, uh, 
this, the displays will not be quite as bright as an LED display, and the picture can dim and yellow with age, and sometimes even brand new from the factory, the displays have more of a yellowish tint to them. In addition to that, CCFLs use more energy than LEDs, so you might see your battery life uh, get worse a little bit. Uh, but in my experience, it's still enough battery life to get through the day. Just know that if you're coming from an LED display, you might lose a little bit of battery life. Now, if you're doing this on an X200 and it already has a CCFL display in it, then you're not going to see any real change in battery life. But if you're using an X200 that has an LED display or an X201, then you will notice that the battery life will decrease a little bit. Without further ado, let's get started. Let's take apart this ThinkPad. Okay, so before we start taking this apart, I just want to show you, look at how disgusting this keyboard is. I mean, it looks better on camera than it actually looks in person, but it is so worn out. Pretty much all of the keys have lost all of their texture and are completely shiny. In addition, the palm rest and track point buttons are really worn out. And if you look on the actual surface of the track point, most of the texture is gone. I mean, you can kind of see it, but you cannot feel it. It just feels like you're putting your finger on a thing of ice. It's just that worn out. So in addition to getting a new display, I also ordered a brand new keyboard and palm rest, albeit one without a touchpad and with a fingerprint reader, which will be a nice little upgrade. So I figured that getting a new keyboard and palm rest would go very nicely with the brand new display we're putting in this thing. Definitely don't want to mess up the new display with a yucky old keyboard. So now we're going to actually take this thing apart. The obvious thing first is to make sure the computer's powered down and you've unplugged it and removed the battery. And then there are a bunch of screws here on the bottom, too many to name, but they're all the same size and they all come out, so pretty much just take out every screw you see. As you can see here, I've fast-forwarded the footage so that you don't have to sit through me trying to unscrew all of them. Sorry about my arm getting in the way, there was really no better way for me to angle the camera. After you've done that, you can open up the computer. Like on all ThinkPads, push out and then up on the keyboard to remove it, unplug it, and then lift the palm rest facing you, and then it should come out. There's a few snaps holding it in place that you might have to worry about, but it's no big deal, and as long as you're careful, you won't break it. Then there are these four screws here on the bottom and back of the computer, which hold the display in place. You can leave them in until after you've disconnected all the cables going to the display, but I did this early just because. Then there are these two screws here that are holding down the video cable for the display that you'll have to remove. And then after you've removed them, the video cable will come out. Sometimes the shielding will try to come out with it, but it should be fine, and it's fine just staying in place. And you can see here I was also struggling getting this little bezel thing off that surrounds the keyboard. It's really annoying because it's held in by snaps, and parts of it are so thin that every time I've worked on an X201, I've broken them. So you just have to be really careful, and then you should be able to get it out. There's also a magnet holding part of it down, so watch out for that. And there is an end of it that is held in by a screw, so make sure you've removed it. Then there are all of these antenna cables coming from the display. Two of them are connected to the wireless card. And if you have a 3G modem in yours, then they will also be connected to those. There's also, on some models, this one cable that goes underneath this one daughter board here. Um, you might be able to get it out without removing the daughter board. Other times just unscrew the daughter board and then lift it up enough that you can get the cable out. Here I don't really care what happens to the cable because it's for the 3G modem that I'm not going to use anyway, and this display housing isn't going to be used anyway since I'm putting an X200 display housing in. So this is the part of the video when I realized that I had an LED-based X200 display assembly and not a CCFL display assembly. So I ended up having to go on eBay and order a new display assembly, making sure this time that it was a CCFL display assembly. While it is possible to order the display cable and the inverter board separately, I just find it easier to get it all pre-assembled, and honestly, usually the price will end up being about the same anyways. So, now we're going to pick up filming a few days later. 
All right, so now we have the X200 display assembly. Now, as you can see here, there are three stickers along the bottom of the bezel that you need to pry up in order to get to the screws underneath. You can see I'm struggling a little bit with this here, but basically just get a fine flat tip screwdriver or some other flat prying tool that can fit into the little circle area and just lift up the stickers. Save them for later if you care about your computer's aesthetics once you put everything back together. Once the stickers are off, there are three screws underneath that you will have to remove, and then once you've taken those out, you should be able to pry up the display bezel by running your finger along the inside of the bezel and lifting and then working your way around. It should come up fairly easily. If not, make sure you didn't miss any screws. Once you've gotten it off, you can set it aside for later, or dispose of it if you want to put your X201 bezel back on later. So, as you can see here, there is a nice inverter board there on this X200 display assembly. And then if you look here on the X201 assembly, you can see that there is no inverter board because it's an LED-based assembly. Now, there are six screws you're going to need to remove. Two black screws towards the bottom of the housing, and then there are four silver screws along the sides of the display hinge that you will need to get. Before you get too far in the disassembly of the display assembly, you're going to want to make sure to unplug the high voltage cable from the inverter board that's connecting to the display. And then once you remove those, you're going to need to figure out a way to lift up the display in order to get to the screws that hold the hinge to the display. Um, this can be a little bit tricky and you'll have to do some maneuvering, but as long as you're careful, then you should be able to get the screws out without too, too much trouble. So up next, as you can see, we've gotten the old display out. You just lift up on the tape that's holding the connector on and then pull on the connector outwards. Be careful not to break the connector so that you don't have to get a new one, because that's just a pain in the butt. And then we are going to get our new display, but first I'm going to unscrew the Think Light assembly up here because it's on the same ribbon cable as the display cable. And I'm doing this so that I have a little bit more room to get the connector onto the display because I don't want to risk breaking the connector or the display. So I'm disconnecting the think light so that we have a little bit more room for me to put the connector onto the new display. Now I'm going to ask you to please excuse the camera angle here and my head getting in the way. Um, I wasn't going to risk breaking the display just to get a good camera angle. Um, but as you can see, uh, you just put the new cable in place on the display and make sure it's securely put in. Make sure it's not flipped the other way around so you don't short anything out. But once it's in there securely, you can start to put the display back down. Make sure you get the Think Light assembly back into its correct position. And then before we put things back together, we have to make sure that we connect the high voltage cable to the inverter board. Now, I don't know if it's like this with every display that they make, but for some reason they gave us a lot of extra slack on this cable. There's a lot of extra space for this cable to go. So I ended up having to tuck the cable kind of underneath the display in order for it to fit properly without getting in the way of anything else. So far I haven't had any issues with the display, so hopefully there's no short circuits or anything going on in there. Alright, so before we go too far ahead in putting the display back together, we're going to plug it in just to test it out and make sure it's working. That way we don't get the entire assembly back together, only to realize that we did something wrong. So I'm just putting the display connector down here onto the motherboard, and then I am going to connect the keyboard so that we have a way of powering the computer on. And then after that, we just plug in a power supply, hit the power button on the keyboard, and as you can see, it is working just fine. And even though we're just looking at the ThinkPad setup menu, it's already looking better than the TN panel that was in there before. 
Once you have confirmed that the display is working correctly, we can put it back together. All right, so once you've gotten all the screws back in place, like those tricky ones holding the display to the hinge and then the ones holding the hinge itself in place, you can remove the screen protector that was covering the screen during shipping, and then you can put the bezel back on. Before you put the bezel back on, just make sure all of the wires coming out of the assembly into the lower half of the computer are in their correct places so that you don't have any issues trying to get the bezel on. If there are any cables or wires out of place, try to adjust them, put them in the right places, and then put the bezel back on. Like I said before, the bezel is held in by snaps, so it should just snap in place. Just keep pushing down as you go around the perimeter of the display and work out any ones that are being tricky, and eventually you will have the display bezel back in place. Once you have done this, you can put the three screws back in place that hold the bezel to the rest of the display assembly, and then you can get those stickers that you saved earlier and put them back on top of the screws. All right, guys, now that we've gotten this back together, just wanted to show you the Windows 10 wallpaper I have on here, and then just a picture of some colors so you can see how nice this display looks. Uh, the camera really doesn't do it justice. It looks so much better in person. Really, the only downside about this display is how dim it is compared to an LED display, and that really limits its usage, especially in the daytime. But it's still bright enough for most tasks, and it just looks really nice. It looks as good as the IPS display on my X230, and as you can see here, it blows my T430 out of the water. And the keyboard, as always, is a joy to type on. So I think this about wraps up the video for today. I hope this video helped anyone out there who's hoping to make this upgrade to their ThinkPad X200 or X201. As always, if there's any questions or you have any comments, be sure to leave them in the comment section. And most of the people watching this video probably are huge fans of ThinkPads, so be sure to check out my other videos. I do a lot of ThinkPad videos. But as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.